Hi, in this video we're going to talk about RAID, which stands for Redundant Array of Independent Disks. It used to be called Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks, but people tend to stick with independent these days. So there's all kinds of different RAID levels, and we're going to talk about just the more common ones, because there's a lot of them that aren't used anymore. Okay, so let's begin here. All right, first we have RAID 0, which is striping and it stripes all the data across all the disks when the write is performed. But there is no redundancy because it's just making a stripe. There's no backups or anything like that. So if you lose one disk, it's going to lose the data on that disk, which is tied to the data on the other disk, and therefore your data is lost. But the benefit of RAID 0 is it has high read and write performance, and that's the main reason people use it just for performance as aspects if they want to get some more performance out of their system. So since it doesn't have any redundancy, you're going to have to do regular backups if it's important stuff. Because a lot of people will use RAID 0 for non-important stuff just to get the speed if they're not too concerned about having backups. And you do need a minimum of two disks to have a RAID 0 set. And the maximum number of disks is going to be determined by your RAID controller or your RAID software based on how many it could handle. Okay, the next is RAID 1, which is called mirroring. Now, every time a write is done, it's written to both drives at the same time. It does offer redundancy and protection of your data. So if you lose one disk, since it's a mirror, it's an exact copy on each one, you lose one disk, you're going to have the exact copy of your data on here. But if you lose both disks, then you're out of luck because you're going to lose all your data. So if you do lose one disk, it's important to put in a new disk there so the mirror set will rebuild itself. And one downside to RAID 1 is you lose 50% of your capacity. So let's say this is a one terabyte disk and this is a one terabyte disk. You, th you would think, oh, I'm going to have two terabytes of disk space. No, you're going to just have one because they're duplicates of each other. So you lose 50% of your capacity that way. It does have pretty good write performance, and it does have really good read performance because it's reading off two disks at the same time. And you do need a minimum of two disks, obviously, otherwise, because you, you can't mirror it to itself. And both drives need to have the same capacity because it's going to be a copy of, of it. So if this is a one terabyte disk here, then this needs to be a one terabyte disk as well. All right, then one of the more common uh, RAID levels is RAID 5, which is called striping with parity. And it stripes all the data to the disk for performance enhancements. And it uses parity blocks also, which is in the orange here, for data protection. So when it writes to one, it's writing the data to all of them. And that's how you get your redundancy and your protection. And if you lose one disk, you're still okay because you could put in a new one or have the spare take over and the rest of it the RAID controller will rebuild all the information that was lost off that disk onto the new disk and you'll be back in business and that's what a hot spare is for too so most cases the hot spare is set just to take over if you lose a disk and then doing the rebuild which could take a long time actually it does have slower write performance because when you write something it has to write to every disk and do the parity but it does have fast read performance because you get to read off of every disk you need to have minimum of three disks for a RAID 5 but you will lose one disk worth of data capacity so let's say these are each one terabyte disks for the parity you're gonna lose one terabyte out of these four terabytes so you'll technically have three terabytes of usable space and it'll use the capacity of the smallest drive. So let's say this is a one terabyte, this is a one terabyte, this is a one terabyte, and this is a 500 gig. It's going to use just 500 gigs for it. So you're just going to have one terabyte total, or actually two terabytes total, instead of four terabytes if you were to use all one terabyte disks. And there's a newer version called RAID 6, which allows you to lose two disks at one time to be OK. And that's starting to get more popular than RAID 5, and then you could have two spares actually if you want as well. Okay, now we're going to talk about some of the hybrid RAID levels. Uh, and we're going to start with RAID 0 plus 1, which is called a mirror of stripes. 
So there's disks made into groups. So this is group one, this is group two, and within each group the data is striped for performance. And then you mirror each group. So this, these two disks are a mirror copy of these two disks and vice versa. And that way you get your redundancy. So you could lose a disk here and still have this one. And you could lose a disk here as well and still have this one. So you could technically have two disk loss out of these four and still be OK. But if you lose you know, two in a one set here, then you're going to be out of luck because you're going to break the mirror and you're going to have to do rebuild there. And you do get decent write performance, and you do get high read performance because you have multiple disks to read from. And you do need a minimum of four disks because you have to have you know two for a mirror and two for a mirror, and then the stripe you know within the mirror. And you will just like RAID one lose fifty percent of your total capacity because because you know this is a mirror of this. So if this is one terabyte, one terabyte, one terabyte, one terabyte, you're going to have just two terabytes total. And the last hybrid RAID level is called RAID 10. That's a stripe of mirrors. And in this one you have groups that are mirrored. So this is mirrored like a normal RAID 1. This is mirrored as a normal RAID 1. And then you stripe the data across the RAID 1 groups for performance. And just like the other ones you get redundancy and protection. And you could lose one disk in each group, just like the other one. And just like RAID 0 plus 1, you lose 50% of your capacity. And also just like RAID 1, 50% of your capacity gone. You get the high read performance, because you have the striping in the multiple disks here. And you get decent write performance, because it's got a write to multiple disks, so that takes a little longer. And of course, you need a minimum of four disks. So you could have a mirror here and a mirror here, and then stripe it like that. And then, just like the others, it'll use the capacity of the smallest drive, so make sure they all match and make sure they're all the capacity you want to use. OK, so that does it for the most common RAID sets in use today. So you could check out our website. We'll actually have an article written up on this with a little more detail than the video has. And you could check that out and get a little more information. Thanks for watching.